Hello, we're back to that time of year again when this question keeps getting asked over and over again. What is the best diesel heater? Today I'm going to be having a look at some of the big brands, something in the middle and also the really, really cheap ones. And I'm going to let you know which one I've chosen and it might surprise you. So look out in the next few weeks when it arrives, we're going to be having a look at it and actually getting it fitted as well, a diesel heater. A diesel heater is generally the option which most people go for. Yes, you can get propane. Um, propane heaters are generally cheaper to buy than the diesel heaters, but the fuel efficiency isn't as good as a diesel heater and diesel is deemed to be a lot safer. So a lot of people do go for the diesel heater. Another option is an electric fan heater. Now this is absolutely fine. If you're on an electric hook up, you can hook up, plug your fan in and it's all good. But if you're out in the wild, if you're away from hook up, your batteries on board aren't up to scratch for what you need to actually run an electric heater, it's not going to be good. Electric heaters do need a lot of power, so unless you are on hook up, these aren't going to be the right option for you. So a diesel heater is the way forward. There are various manufacturers of diesel heaters with suitable products for your van, whether they be a small VW transporter, or you've got the bigger VW Crafter, or even a much bigger motorhome. These brands generally do have different products in the different ranges to be able to suit your needs. So today I'm going to be looking at the VW Transporter options. And the first brand which I'm going to start with is Eberspacher, or Eberspacher. I'm not German, I don't really know how to pronounce it. The common heater for the small van from Herbispatcher is the Airtronic D2. This is a 2.2 kilowatt heater, which can be operated from the lower power setting of 850 watts, which only has a fuel consumption of 0.1 litres per hour. They say the fuel pump in this one is silent, so it's ideal for fitting inside your van. Uh, now I do know a lot of people do like to fit the heaters outside the van. Um, one obviously creates more space and two because it is a lot quieter but this one they do say is silent i have been in a van with this heater and yeah it's pretty true to its word it is a really good high quality product it comes with a seven day programmable timer so obviously you can just set that if you're away for a week you can set it perfectly as to the times you're going to need that or you can just even if you at home and you're using it as a daily vehicle you can make sure it's set to come on in the morning and defrost it so you've not got any ice to be clearing off your windscreen in the morning the display which is provided looks a really really classy device and it's obviously well made like the rest of the unit is the cost so the cost of this unit is on the higher end of the ones which we're going to be looking at today and the basic supply cost of the unit is 1085 and as you can see that's just taken from a website as of today uh, but you do need to have a look carefully if you are buying supply only what's actually included in the package because some of the packages and prices they do vary it as to what contents you actually get because there are various different options which you can spec with them um, just make sure that you know exactly what's going to be included in the package which you've purchased so next on the list from the big brands is the brand Webasto. Uh, and the Webasto heater, which we're looking at for the small van, is the Airtop 2000 STC. So this again is another two kilowatt heater, um, providing on the low setting of 0.9 kilowatts and a fuel consumption from 0.12 per hour. So the lower setting is slightly higher than the Eberspatcher, uh, which obviously relates to the uh, fuel consumption also being very, very slightly uh, higher as well. Very similar selling points to the uh, Bespatcher uh, with smooth blower and burner operation. And again, I've been in a van with the Robasto heater and this is fantastic. Uh, also comes with a, a nice control panel and can actually uses a lot of the similar features as the Air Bespatcher does. The big draw factor for me, as far as the Webasto is concerned, is the Thermo Connect app. Now, this Thermo Connect app, um, as you see, is a web-controlled uh, application, and you can do various different things for the Webasto heater, um, timing it, all the functions on and off. You can find out what the unit's running at, um, when it's going to be coming on next, 
it, it's just a really, really good unit. And this isn't Bluetooth controlled like some of the units which you would get. So you can actually sit at home and do various different bits and pieces from the app, send it to the vehicle, and then the heater will come on, turn off, program it, whatever the functionality it is. This doesn't come with the standard unit. It is an optional extra, um, so it does obviously add to the cost of that heater. Uh, so the cost of the basic heater, £954, but as I say, that package can vary from website to website as to what's actually included in it. So just to make sure that you know what actually what is included in that package which you're getting. Both these big brands, uh, they come with two year warranties. So you do have warranties. So if there are any faults in the product itself, you've got that warranty to fall back on, uh, which is a, obviously a nice, nice comfort blanket. And they're established, you know, they've been around for many, many years. They've got good support centers and you, you just can't go wrong with either of those two. But they are pricey. So what else is there? So another option which we've got in the UK, and one which I know a lot of people go for, uh, and that is the planar or autotherm. Now this product was previously manufactured in Russia, and I know in recent times, few people have been concerned about what's gonna happen with supply chain, what happens if there's a problem with my heater, you know, am I gonna be able to get parts because of obviously what's currently going on in Russia. Uh, but manufacturing now is totally in Latvia. Uh, all the manufacturing has been brought to Latvia and there isn't going to be any problem with parts, accessories, servicing, um, any warranty work such as that. So that is a good peace of mind for people who've currently got them or were a little bit concerned who are about buying them. So this unit, as of the others, are 2 kilowatt heater uh, and it's 2 kilowatt heater with a 0 0.8 kilowatt uh, low starting point and the consumption from 0.1 liters per hour. Uh, it comes with a two year warranty, uh, and this is backed by after sales and technical support, which is seven days a week. However, if you do actually get this heater fitted by one of the authorized service centers, that warranty of two years actually becomes three years. So it's really, really good idea to actually have it done professionally fitted by one of the authorized service centers and then you get that extra year on the warranty. This heater comes as standard with a, a controller, uh, which is just an LCD device, um, black with white writing. Uh, you've probably seen it on a lot of the conversions which are around. Nothing wrong with this controller, but they have brought out, as of 2021, so last year, what's known as the comfort controller. Now this is an optional upgrade. Uh, I think it's 110 pounds approximately um, to actually have this controller but it's a much classier unit, which brings it in line to the, to the other two big brands which we've mentioned. Really classy, full functionality, really, really good controller. And if I go for this one, that is definitely controller, which I would be going for. Well worth that extra money. So before I come on to another option, and also tell you now which one of the units I have actually bought, which of these three is the best? Well, I've used all three. And personally, I like them all. Uh, I couldn't really differentiate as far as the, the heating side of things between any of them. You know, they're all three of them were really good quality, solid units, all pretty quiet. You couldn't really hear them running, albeit all three which I'd been in were actually installed underneath the vehicle, which obviously is going to be making a difference. Um, but from all three, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. But you don't want to take my word for it. I asked lots of other van owners which diesel heater they think is the best. And the answer, in every case, the one I've got. Every single one of them said the best diesel heater is the one I've got. So the answer is you can't go wrong with any of them. But one sort of heater which kept coming up over and over again, and you know what I'm gonna say now, and that is the Chinese diesel heaters. So the Chinese diesel heaters do come in lots of different brand name. Tricklets, Vivo, Max Peding Rods. There's, there's lots of different guises of the heaters. And if you actually look at 
the actual units themselves, they all look pretty identical. These are manufactured and actually distributed from China. Now, a product from China, people often think, oh, it's China, don't want anything to do with that. Well, you're probably watching this video on a product made in China. Your TV, your iPhone, your Android device. A lot of these products which you use on a daily basis are actually made in China. The difference is the products which you're buying, so say you, you are watching this on a, uh, an Apple iPhone, there's lots of different control measures, control mechanisms, quality controls. There's lots of things which Apple have to go through to make sure those products are going to meet the needs uh, of their end consumer. With the products coming directly from China, they don't really go through that process. So the quality might not necessarily be the same. These diesel heaters, a lot of the components which are in them are actually pretty generic. You know, you will look at one of the, the brands from a Chinese diesel heater, you look at the control panel, and it's exactly the same control panel as another brand of the Chinese heater, because they're just using generic parts. But if you actually look at the, the shape of the plastics on the diesel heater of a Chinese diesel heater, and compare it to one of the bigger brand diesel heaters, and you'll notice actually, they're the same. So, could they be really that bad? Not according to other owners, no. Because people love them. People keep banging on on the Facebook groups and the forums and when we meet people at events. I've got a channel Chinese diesel eater. What are you spending a thousand pounds on your spot? This is brilliant. I installed it myself. Never had any problems with it. But is that really the case? You know, these heaters are around about a hundred pounds. That's a big difference. That is a really, really big difference in the price. From even the, the planar heater, you know, that, that's, that's a massive saving. But it's a saving for a reason, because you've not got that quality control. You don't have a warranty. The instructions can sometimes be in Chinese, which I'm not gonna be able to understand. There's no after sales, there's no support. Well, actually there is because these have been so, so popular in recent years. You have a look up on Facebook and type in Chinese diesel heater and there's numerous Facebook groups, numerous support groups, and there's thousands of members. I looked on one the other day and there was, well, there was tens of thousands of members and that's just brilliant. You know, they're all posting on there. I've got this error. How do you sort it? And then somebody will say, oh, it's simple. This is all you do. Or somebody say, I'm looking at this brand. Can you help me out with this? There's lots and lots of support. So you might previously have struggled with that support, but now because of all these Facebook groups are there, the help and advice which you need is available. So at a time when money's tight, things are getting more expensive, and you're tightening those purse strings, but you still want a warm van, is it worth the risk? Yes, it could be, but you do need to be careful. As there isn't any true control over these products which are coming over, you don't always get what you think you're getting. At the moment, uh, or in previous months, there have been a shortage of the two kilowatt diesel heater. But obviously, because a lot of people are converting VW transporters and the Ford Connects and Transits, these are smaller vans, so they don't want the bigger five kilowatt heaters. They only want the two kilowatts. So the demand has stripped out the supply. So what they've been doing is getting a five kilowatt heater and rebadging it a two kilowatt heater so they can still sell the product, even though they've actually ran out. So you need to be really, really careful. There are things which you can look out for as far as this is concerned to make sure that your two kilowatt heater is actually a two kilowatt heater. So is it worth the risk? The cost is considerably lower. I've decided to buy one and find out. Yes, there you go. I am buying a Chinese diesel heater. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking this to a local converter. Uh, we're gonna be opening the box 
having a look what's inside, having a look at the parts which have come with it, uh, just to see the quality of a good reputable brand as opposed to one of the Chinese brands, just to see what the differences are. Um, and if there are any parts which we think mm, actually that does need to be replaced, we will replace it and we'll actually install it with a much better component. One of the brands which did keep coming up on the, the various Facebook groups um, was Max Speedings. These are talked about really frequently and although these models have been upgraded and actually one of them is a five kilowatt heater with a Bluetooth app which I'll pop a link below so you can actually see that one. So it's got its its own app and you can control it from the app and it's new and improved and it's all bells and whistles and it's meant to be really good. Uh, currently actually on offer cheaper on Amazon than it actually is on Max Speeding's own website. So make sure you have a look at that. The five kilowatt is too much. So I am actually gonna be going for the two kilowatt. This unit does not come with the Bluetooth app. So all the things which I like with my gadgets, I do like to be able to control it from my phone and things. I'm not going to be able to do that with a 2 kilowatt, but the 5 is too much, so I'm going to stick with a 2 kilowatt, have a look at it, and see what it's like. I've bit the bullet. I've bit the bullet. I'm really keen to see the outcome. I cannot wait to get it fitted, so do subscribe if you do want to see that. If you haven't seen my video on why you shouldn't be running summer tyres when the temperature gets below 7 degrees, have a look at that here. Do let me know in the comments what you think about diesel heaters yourselves. For now, take care. I shall see you soon.